A 4-1 home loss to Liverpool last time out led to the departure of one manager, Slavin Bilic. And it opened up a door for a controversial selection, but fans seem to be getting positive. David Moyes has his first game for West Ham against Watford this weekend, live in front of the TV. Against a Watford that have recently been struggling with a manager that's sought after and rumoured to be linked with Everton. Watford have not picked up a point since beating Arsenal, defeats to Chelsea, Stoke and Everton. Um, they've dropped from 4th to ninth in the league, so Watford are struggling. Um, yeah, today is the preview of West Ham and Watford at the weekend. Welcome back to Iron United's channel. Today I am joined by some familiar faces, some that are on the channel a lot, and today we have a special guest. I have Luke, Richard, and to my right we have Mark Javot, a.k.a. The Red Man. Mark, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks man. Good to be here. Yeah, good man. Thanks for coming on tonight, Mark. Um, Pleasure, Mark. Pleasure. I'm actually going to... So, Mark, yeah, we've got Watford this weekend, and yeah. we want to know what your opinion is of all the new changes at West Ham. David Moyes is in. What's your thoughts? Um, <laughs> 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 oh, you bastard. You know what? I mean... <laughs> I think if you if you do follow you know you follow me on Twitter, so you know my initial reaction. I mean, I think you know before he was before Billy's got sacked, I was so sorry against it. I was, you know, I said some things, and you know it was like I never watched West Ham play if he's in charge, and it was I was angry. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, we say shit when we're angry, and. You know, I'm gutted I said it now, but I never liked David Moyes, what can I say? I mean, mm. and I still don't. I want him to prove me wrong. I really, really do. I I would love to be proved wrong. I want to be proved wrong. Um, of course, I've got to watch West Ham's my team, my blood. I love it. It's, yeah. you know, I can't live without it. But I'm gutted for Billets. I'm gutted for the whole team. I really was. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think it's transpiring that it was too nice. And... We all know that doesn't work in football, um, yeah, yeah. but I'm, I'm still gutted for all of them. So, but you know, now we've got to move on. You know what I mean? We can't, um, we can't live in the past. We can't dwell on it. We've got to move on as a, as a club, as a team, as fans, everything. Yeah, of course. Um, people say, you know, you've got to get behind a manager. Well, I will yeah. if he proves me wrong. You know, I'm not 100% for it at the moment, but. That's my opinion. Don't make me a shit fan. If people think that, I couldn't give a fuck. I really yeah. couldn't. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I well, think listen, we're all entitled. That's what we are that's... with fans. We're entitled to our opinion. Yeah. Right? My and opinion that's... was that I didn't want Moyes as our manager. Yeah. He is now. I've got to accept it. I've got no choice. Yeah. I will back my team. I'll bleed claret and blue, you know? Yeah. No doubt. But I really do hope he proves me wrong, man. I swear to God. I hope to God he proved me wrong. And Mark, but, I think I don't think you're really the only one that's got kind of a similar opinion to yourself. And if I hand over to yourself, Rich, I mean, Moyes has been busy this week, very busy bringing in a backroom staff. What's your opinion on some of the, the staff he's brought in? Yeah, look, I mean, going back to the whole Moyes appointments, I think all West Ham fans can agree he wasn't our first choice. Uh, he never really was going to be our first choice, but he was the only real manager that was available at the time that was going to kind of fit into our mold. People were speaking about us getting Manuel Pellegrini, Carl Ancelotti. To be fair, that's never going to happen, really. You're deluded if you think that's happening. Um, but I, I think that Alan Irvine's come in, Stuart Pearce have come in. Those are two guys that, you know, you know you're going to get something from them where they're going to give a couple of players a kick up the backside, and that's what our players need at the, at the time being. They need a rollicking. They need a more intensity training sessions. And the whole... Um, consensus from what I've been hearing around the club is there's a lot of positivity you know Antonio has spoken really well about Moyes coming in and as Mark said you know we've just got to back the manager and give him a chance and if he does do well then that'll be great but yeah so we can only see in the next few games what Moyes really delivers but you know holding thumbs he can do well for us. Look there's been a few another appointments like what Richard's been saying with the staffing issues coming in and we're welcoming, welcoming back a, a player that showed a lot of passion when he played at the club and it's cycle Stuart Pearce what is your opinion of bringing someone like him of his calibre in? I mean, do you know much about his coaching background? Um, well, first of all, apparently I talk too much on this video, so I try to be short and sweet as I can, uh, which is fair enough, it's pretty true anyway. Um, I don't, 
I've never really been a massive fan of PSC as uh, the manager. Um, really? And the, 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 no, I, I haven't seen that much what about of him. England? Uh, he, yeah, he, he done all right. But I'm talking he like. Right. Seriously, if you're talking, he was the best young England, like England kid manager we've had for so many years. I think. That's a fair point. But I'm talking. And he got treated really badly by England, in my view. That's he fair got enough. Shots on. Yeah. <laughs> if you're if you're talking, what well, I'm saying, I'm talking like. Premier League standard football. So I'm saying when he was manager of Man City, when he oh, was yeah. like, I know they didn't, they didn't have the money back then, they have now. But I'm saying but that. As a manager, PSC, we talk about as a manager, no, but I think as a coach, I think. More than Mario. I, I was it, happy, it, to be honest. Mm. Fair enough. It, it, which is the majority of fans are happy to have PSC back, as I am as well, if he comes in the same way as I thought Dick's first come in. Someone yeah. who's at the old school variety, um, very you no know, old bar, doesn't take any shit. Um, passion as much as you like, former West Ham background, all the rest of it, you know. Knows what he's talking pretty, about. But Dix, apparently within the last so and so years or however long, has gone from being an assistant manager or a coach to basically a glorified ball boy. So I'm hoping that the same yeah. doesn't happen to Piercy. Um and if and if what people are saying is that he doesn't let slackers lie down and do what they want then I'm all for it because that team needs to kick up the arse I've never known any team that needs it. So hopefully he does have the impact that we hope we will do, and, and and the background that he's got with, the, with the, like you say, with the England youth team, hopefully he has that as well. Um, but I'm not I'm not gonna shower him with massive praise because I, no, I don't really. Have a, neither, have a, but it just made me, it, it it appeased me a little, to be fair. Yeah. Mm, I, know, agree with that. I think maybe that's what he's there for. I don't know, but yeah. I don't know. It, it, it made me a little bit happy, let's be honest, um, it's, to know it's been, that he's actually there. It's been an interesting week if you're a West Ham fan and you're on social media or you're on a website because the media team seems to have had a new approach and that's showing our intensity in training. Um, Mark, over to you. Do you think that is something that we have missed? Do you think that is propaganda? What is your opinion on some of the videos from this week? It's nice to see. It's lovely to see, but I mean, if it wasn't going on before, if he if wasn't like that great at trade before, then you know, yeah. I'm I'm gutted. <laughs> I really am. I mean, because I thought at the time when when Billy first came in, it, it looked like he was doing a real job. You know, there were some great names about about him smashing up Liverpool and Arsenal and Chelsea. You know, we was on a great run, and it felt yeah. great to be a West Ham fan again at the beginning, didn't it? You yeah, know, absolutely. last season of folding, some of them games, mate, you know, I still get goosebumps, you uh, know, I still watch the video and it's like, oh, mate, you know, we could, we could, it felt like we could be the start of something great with Billich, it oh, really yeah. did. Right? Then pay it happened, right? And for me, for me, <laughs> I think Billich angled that really well. Yeah. I really did. But it kind of, I don't know, that was the first name in his coffee. It really was. It was the, it, 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 a lot of people have described that as the making and the the ruining of Billich, really. I think, right. I think it was. Yeah. I think it was. I think yeah. everything yeah. came out after that, and I think the players maybe took advantage after that, and they saw weakness in kindness after that. It all seemed to happen after that. It really yeah. did. Mm-hmm. Um, I ain't blaming anyone. I don't care. It's, it's not that I don't care. It's, it, I don't care what happened then, what I care now is about the future for West Ham, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and listen, we don't know what future is in hold, like is in our hands. I mean, we've gone from having a, a manager that we backed, we always backed and things weren't going right. Now we've got yeah. a temporary coaching and manager in place. It's not ideal, mm-hmm. but it's here, it's real, it's happening. Yeah. And Richard, we've got on the opposition coming up against Watford, a manager that's sought after, linked with Everton, Silva, what do you know on this guy and the teams he puts out? I mean, he's been linked with Everton, as you say, and, and rightly so. I think he's been fantastic. Uh, he was brilliant with Hull City, unlucky not to keep them up, really. And then now, you know, he's gone to Watford. They're playing an attacking style of football, really entertaining. Yeah, they've lost the last three games, but you look at the likes of Richarlison, Andre Gray, you know, they've got some really decent players there that can, that can do the business. But I really think that be playing them at the right time you know they, they've lost three in a row new managers come in I think they'll be there for the taking and I think we can definitely get something at Vicar Road. it's not going to be easy for sure yeah. uh, but I, I have a lot of respect for Marco Silva I think I, I personally I thought that he would have fitted in really well at West Ham but obviously that didn't work out he's gone to Watford we've got Moyes in uh, it's yeah. going to be a tough game but hopefully we can get something 
So you say you say they lost three in a row, right? And you say it's a good time to play them. I, I don't see it like that. I mean, the yeah. West Ham way for me is going there now and, and losing. Yeah. I mean, you, you you hear all these stories about new teams getting a new manager, a new coach in yeah. place, and then they yeah. say, "Will the team win on the bounce of a new manager?" But as you said, Mark, we are West Ham. Yeah, and that does not count in our team. Uh, yeah. Don't care for us, mate. Don't care. Care for us is other people's records. They yeah. love to break yeah. a record against us. Yeah. We're always That's the team that break records for people or help yeah. them break those yeah. records. And Absolutely. it don't matter. That team ain't lost. Yeah, he's lost three hundred pounds. Yeah. <laughs> Enter West Ham. <laughs> <laughs> so true. It is so true, and we can't we can't even deny that. Look, it don't matter if we're on the best run of our life. It don't matter if we've won ten on the bounce. It would not matter. Yeah. We'll go there yeah. and lose. Yeah, absolutely. It's how we do things. I'm hoping, <laughs> it, I'm hoping that it doesn't, and I'm hoping that Moyes first game in charge we win. Yeah. I'm hoping I can start saying why well, I'm wrong. I'm hoping that I do. I, I want West Ham to do well. Right I don't want to be one of them, and I never will be one of them people who think, oh, well, if we start losing, he's going to get sacked. That's not me. You know, mm. any fan says I ain't a fan. I'm sorry, yeah. and I'm not one of these people who think I'm a real fan. You're not. I'm, I hate that shit. Yeah. But we know, are. Uh, did you know what the main connection is? We're all West Ham. If you go by social media, sometimes you realise that we are a fickle group of fans. <laughs> we're, we're up and down. What I, don't want, right like, what, what, what I would really, really hate is us to end up like you know Arsenal, mm. um, the, the, that toxic kind of thing, and it, it, it kind of started to feel like that in the last few months with West Ham, especially mm. like the the ability and ability out the grade. You know, it seemed to think if you if you've got an opinion about West Ham, then if you didn't if they didn't agree with you, then you're not proper West Ham. It's like yeah, yeah. Man, fuck yeah. off, really. Yeah. You know? I'm <laughs> West Ham since I was six, I'm fifty. Yeah. You're 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 sixteen years old, I think, on Twitter. I don't give a shit. Don't yeah. tell me I ain't a fan, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's the biggest thing. And Mark, that's the biggest thing about. And you know what, guys, we'll talk about it again. Subscribe to our channel because we give everyone a voice. We have all different opinions on this. We ain't licking people's arses. We ain't doing this, doing that. If you've got an opinion, you come on this show and you say your opinion. But look over to yourself. We want to know what. I mean, you're looking at players like Rich. I can't even say his name. Is it Richardson? <laughs> I mean, I'm going to let you struggle with that one. <laughs> he's, he's been on form for Watford. Yeah, they've not but, played particularly that great over the past couple of weeks. But is he their biggest threat that you know of? You've got players like Tom Cleverley that seems to be reborn under Watford. Yeah, it's, it's one of them where I think we can always we always kind of tend to look at one player or a couple of players that seem to do really well, and then their worst player comes up and scores a goal against us. So it'll be it's, someone it's, right, who it's a... always bangs a goal in against us, like Dini. It will be that well, proverbal, perennial, whatever yeah. you want to call it, fucker who comes back to hold us. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one key message, sorry, Luke, it's coming back to you in a second, is that it looks like Watford are got quite a lot of injury concerns. Now, again, I'm not trying to say that that's the reason that we could potentially win the game. But they look right. like they've got a 10-man injury crisis, is the way they call it. Troy Deeney's missing because he's suspended. Because oh, we're <laughs> going to win that. We're going to win that. Because he, oh, tried to, money right now, yeah. he tried to pop Definitely. Joe Allen's eyes out of his sockets. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, But, I mean, you still can't come away from the fact that they've got some quality players. They, they are on mm. the radar. Their manager's on the radar of the clubs. They're, they're beating big teams. So, I mean, West Ham have been there, done that before a couple of years ago what's the difference look between this Watford team and, and this West Ham team I think you've got a kind of impetus where um, Marco Silva is not going to let the, the, the losing streak continue I could just see him being one of them type of managers and possibly I know they've been known for their um, extravagant play with Richarlison and then their old school play with Deeney and whatever and the mixture of it all um, but obviously you know Deeney's missing now so Richarlison's probably be their, their, their main guy you know, in attack and whatever, but um, I just think they're they're more resilient than any other Watford team. You know, you look at Watford teams in the past. You know, the Yo-Yo clubs they don't have much stead against uh, 
the big guys, or they don't really give it give it much in the league. And this season, a lot of uh, pundits, especially, have been looking at them and giving them praise, as well mm. as Marco Silva himself. Um, so it's one of them teams where I think that yeah, okay, they've lost a few games, but you know we've had games this this year where we've lost about three or four, and we've just scraped the win out of it. I.e. the Spurs game in in the cup. Um, you know, I've got a winner out of that. I never know. Um, and then it was so maybe that's the same thing for them. Is they'll come into this game, they'll be up for it exactly the same as we will be because we'll have that impetus of uh, a new manager, hopefully. Um, but yeah, what Watford could be uh, more resilient than they've been in the past. Listen, we've done all our chat about Watford. Let's just move straight on to West Ham. David Moyes has got big selections to make this weekend. One of the biggest choices he's got to talk about is Chicharito. Chicharito looks like he is potentially going to miss the game. Um, due to his limping off with a hamstring injury um, for Mexico. So, what does that leave us up top, Mark? What way do you think he needs to set up? What We were in a situation where we didn't know what Bilic was doing with formation. We didn't really know what Bilic's team was coming out. What is Moyes going to do? Because he's got a few decisions to make in this team. What would you do? Me, personally? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is right, he's brought in, he's brought in for the other two threes now, no? It, it looks like he's prepared to give Ayuf a chance, which I don't understand why Bilic didn't. I really don't. Mm. I mean, Martinez, is, <laughs> you don't score that many goals, right, without being a, a quality player, no? And you deserve That's a right. chance, no? I and think, it, yeah. I, and I it think doesn't so. matter, and you make a valid point, it doesn't matter what level you're at, if you're constantly scoring goals, However, you're scoring them. Yeah. You're on form. You're prolific. Yeah. You're you know confident. Where you know where that goal is. Yeah. You're great at getting in those positions. Yeah. If you if you're good enough, you're old enough. That's Absolutely. What we've all always been taught. Mm. So, me personally, I would stick him straight in there. Yeah. I really would. I mean, and I put him up there along Carroll. Oh yeah, bang him right up there. Yeah, Richard. Let him work off Carroll. Richard, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, is it his chance? I mean, you've got to look at the media with the way that they've been put, presenting the youth into the squad, the comments that Moyes has been making. He's been scoring goals recently. Chicharito's out. Is he going to play Sacco with his attitude, with his not No, fitness? fuck He's... Sacco. I'm sorry to jump in. <laughs> I'm sorry to jump in. The... Fuck you, um... Sacco, man. Yeah. Seriously. Seriously, yeah. if I ever see that geezer kissing a badge, I will punch a cunt out. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. no, no. I don't care. I don't care about this fucker. No. Yeah. Drive yourself to somewhere else and go and get signed somewhere else yeah. if you can. Yeah. Go. Get out of my club. Yeah. That's what I would say to that fucker, man. Richard, <laughs> Richard, for you personally. He's uh, had a knock-on effect for your country qualifying for the World Cup. He scored against your country this week, so sorry to sorry to bring that in. But what are your thoughts on the on up front on what Mark said, Carol Martinez? What do you think we'll see? What do you think? What do you want to see? Um, personally, I'd I'd love for Martinez to be given a chance, whether it's from the bench or whether he gets chucked in. Personally, I don't I don't think he will start. I just don't know. I don't think it just yeah, be a little bit too soon. But he won't start. Uh, I think he'll go up with Carol up top. Uh, Saka will probably start on the bench. He scored, as you've mentioned, uh, for Senegal against my my country, and we are of the World Cup now. So thanks for thanks for bringing that up. Anthony. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, yeah, but he, he took his goal really well. To be fair, he played really well against Africa. I know it's only South Africa, but he he's a he, we know Saka is a poacher and he's a finisher, and he, he's a great he's a decent forward. But obviously, as Mark's mentioned, he is a bit of a dickhead when it comes to wanting to leave the club and, and not not committing to the club and that. So. I feel as though he'll start on the bench. Big Andy will start up top, and um, hopefully Andy can get on the end of a few crosses and score a goal or two. Look, over yeah. to you. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> are you saying we play? What, sorry, sorry. Are you saying we should play one out front with Andy Carroll? I think that's how you go with Are you just behind him? Possibly, I, I reckon. What do you think, Luke? Um, well, I'm too scared to say Sacco <laughs> now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, just uh, for the benefit of uh, Mark's screen, um, I think I'm going to go with Carol up front and Martin <laughs> there on the bench. Uh, I so, do. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. But, uh, Mark, honestly, nothing you have said is hasn't been either said before or hasn't been argued before. Yeah. We're all kind of sensitive. I've got, I've got a kind of a weird opinion why he would want to leave the club and why I kind of think, well, Billich has made his own 
kind of is grave with Sacco. I think he missed a massive trick while he was at the club. Me yeah. personally, as a player, not as a not as a personality, as a player, um, because for, I'm getting aside of this, but quickly, but but for me, you got someone like Sacco as a player um, is is a great footballer, but clearly he's a bit of a dickhead, a very very, very egotistical man, and we don't need a poison like that in the squad. Um, but yes. but my, I, 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 Martinez for me. Um, after all that's been going on, he'll see him in training now. Moyes will see him in training now with what he's doing, how he's getting used to the club and whatever. Um, the best thing for me for Martinez would be to be an impact sub. Um, and I think just the way things are going with Watford, you need someone like Carroll as a batting ram up front. Um, yeah. I know people have got gone off Carroll, think it's a bit of a sour, you know, the, the sort of uh, scapegoating thing. Um, I'm not into it personally. I still think Carroll's um, a decent player um, on his day, especially, um, and I think that he's a bit. He's a bit I've always said he is. I think yeah, he no, scares the shit out of defences. He always has done. Exactly. Causes, I mean, what, havoc. What, he causes what, havoc. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So for me, for me, with the way the, the team's going to be set up, I would just go with, with one up front with um, Carroll just start off with or. Um, I'm That's so crazy. desperate to see two up front, and just, but I just really, really want to see us playing. You know. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with you, Mark. And, and I think, to be honest, I don't know. I think a lot of fans probably want to see it. It's just they're worried that they're not going to see it. I'm the biggest canvas of a four four two on our current situation because we need to give it. We can't just play one game of four four two, change the formation, change the team again because we never see consistency in our team. So for me, this is the prime example. The most great opportunity for us to put youth in on the first game of a new manager he's been impressing him in training he's scoring goals he puts him in he puts him in at the deep end because I tell you something if Martinez doesn't play that well his life isn't ruined his career's yeah. not ruined he's still got opportunity but he needs this chance and this is a perfect time it would in fact bring him back down a little bit I mean yeah. you know because if I was him and I was banging them goals in now I think I should be in the first team mm. right give me my chance you get your chance. You don't score. Fuck. Yeah. It might help him. Yeah. You know? It might it help him because he might be chomping at that bit to get in that first team now, yeah. you know? Yeah. I would, wouldn't you? Of course you would. You're mm. banging goals mm. in left, right, and centre, man. And you I think, fuck me, what have I got to do to get in the first team? But I tell you something, though, there's going to be a lot of pressure on him because if he does start or he does come off the bench, a lot of fans are going to expect him to score a goal. It doesn't matter well, if he doesn't score a goal. Well, well, we want it. well, of course we do. But as long as he puts that fucking passion in and if he creates a chance or does more than what we've seen for the beginning of this season, that's enough for me to give him the chance to play again and then that's when I want to see it. Obviously, I want to see him score a hat-trick, but... I just want to see Martinez given a chance. It's youth. Me too. He is desperate. If his... he comes on as a sub, I honestly believe if he comes on as a sub, right, in, in the next home game, he will get the biggest round of applause. Yeah, since, yeah, yeah. You know, That'd be amazing to see him play. He will. He wait. He yeah. will. And he's listen, we waiting for this. We, they have been waiting for it, and there's been a lot of comments and people saying things like. Um, oh, the last time this happened, the player failed, Freddie Sears. Well, do you know what? Freddie Sears didn't really particularly fail. He just was. It was just. It was just a different sort of striker. He was smaller. He got battered around a few times, but he still put in a shift. Martinez, though, on the other hand, he looks a different ball game because he looks a lot bigger, and his eye is on one thing. He gets that ball in the midfield, and he goes forward. He attacks. Thing is, right? I don't remember Freddie Sears banging in twenty-three goals. No, in he didn't. Ball. I think he, he got a few. He got a few in the youth setup, I think, but no. Yeah, he got a fair amount. Yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah, I can't forget his debut goal, can he? Yeah. yeah, I think in one season he got seventeen goals. No. Yeah, something like that. Is I think it wasn't. It wasn't maybe to the level of what Martinez has done. Exactly. Well, that's my point. Yeah. It wasn't nowhere near Martinez because yeah. Martinez. That's what's freaking me out a little bit. Why? Why he wasn't picked by Billets? I don't yeah. understand. I read. A rumor, rumors, you know, that they'd have to pay so much money and he wasn't allowed to pick him and mm. this and that. But then Moyes is coming, bang, all of a sudden, he's, he's, he's in from the under 23, he's straight into the first team. So it's what we want what to see, and if, it we, is. if we don't see but it, do you think, we'll be disappointed. Do you not, but, uh, my, maybe it's me, cause I'm, I'm not my hatred because that's a strong word, but maybe because of my cynicism for Moyes. Is he bringing him in because he's been sitting in the wings watching West Ham and thinking, oh, when I get that job, I know what I'm going to do? 
Yeah. Well, to be honest, though, I wouldn't blame him if he did because I would do exactly the same. To be well, honest, if, 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 right. yeah. <laughs> if Martinez, <laughs> if he wasn't, even if he didn't have a great training session, he's fucking scoring goals. In you go, mate. Well, there's yeah. the door. Yeah. <laughs> because if you know he, he can't do any wrong, can he? Because he's bringing him in because that's what the fans want. And if he does fuck up, the fans wanted it. And if he doesn't, I'm a genius. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nothing to lose. And you know what? Like you said, we're in a situation where we've got some choices to make he's got some choices to make so let's come away from the forward line and think about the midfield now Moyes there's no talk or word of potentially changing captain um, right. Right. what's your situation Mark on Mark Noble does he come back I feel, in the very, team? I feel very I feel very sorry for the guy to be fair mm-hmm. I really do yeah. I mean he, he don't deserve the shit he's getting he don't man yeah. I mean <sighs> I know you say fans are fickle, right? But some fans are just fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. They really are. How can you give a guy like that grief? I don't understand it. I don't get how you can give a guy like that grief. I really, really don't. Yeah. If you don't think that he wants, if you don't think that he's good enough to be the captain, fair play. Yeah. But I think that's the case yeah. though, isn't it? With social media, I think everything just gets. The people worried out there, mate. You know, they're, 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 yeah, that's they're it. Look, I've, I've, been, I've been the same. I've, 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 I've not been viral, I've not been horrible about him, but I think there's a times where you kind of, because of obviously the performances with the team and the way the team have played, especially the last couple of seasons, you do kind of go, can you just fuck off out of the team for yeah. five minutes? Just through pure yeah. passion and just frustration yeah. and just go, yeah. get someone better. And afterwards you go, I'm sorry, Mark, but look, I bleed cat and boo as well. But I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm, you, you're not playing, um, not deserving of a place right now as best as everyone else. But rather than saying that, it comes out as you're a dickhead and all that fuck off, which is you not see, right. You see, Mark, but Mark, you, you, know? made a, you made a valid point, though, Mark, didn't you? You said, um, you said that does, has Moyes sat in the background, looked in, and gone, oh, this is what I would do, this is what I'd do. Because apparently Moyes has con- um, spoke to Billage about the situation and getting a bit of advice, which I think is a, it's a, it's a good thing, and I think that's not mm. a bad thing. But I think yeah. I think he might look from the um, from the outside and go, do you know what? I see Mark Noble being more impact sub last twenty minutes coming on, giving that passion that we need in the last twenty minutes, which is something that I think Mark Noble suited to now. Like well, maybe now, he's getting to that age, no? You what? Maybe he's getting to that age. Yeah, no? yeah. I, mean, I think we yeah, need that Mark Noble of twenty minutes at the end. Rather than we need that Mark Noble of the seventy minutes at the beginning. We need we, we need the Mark Noble who picked up that. What, who was he picked up in the last game? Man, you're right. Yeah, that um, Herrera, Herrera. That's yeah. it. I'm that's that. the Mark oh, that was beautiful. Yeah. That's the Mark Noble, and that's the West Ham that yeah. I want to see. Yeah. You know, and I haven't seen it for a little while, to be yeah. honest. You know, and that's all I want to see. That kind of passion. That, yeah. that that's my West Ham. That that's what I want to see week in week out. People yeah. just that passion. That I don't give a fuck if we lose. But it's how we try, lose. Try, try. Yeah. You know, Rich. I don't mind getting beat. I, I really don't mind getting beat, but I want to get a few digs in. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Rich, we've seen a lot of, again, media this week, and it showed us David Boyes doing one-to-one sessions with Obiang. Do we take that for granted, that that's just a little session that they caught on camera, or they've done that on purpose to give us a little sign that they are working hard with this guy to put him in that team because he has taken that role? Well, we, we don't really know, do we, um, if they only just picked up that part, but I think it's it's genuinely positive. Um, obviously, working, going back to basics, which I think is something that we've lacked, um, getting Obiang just to, to learn how to just turn and open up the play again is it's just refreshing. And going back to the whole media postings, it's, it's about time we see some actual general work and training and stop this rubbish of last season of showing us scoring bolters in training, but then it comes to a game and those players just disappear. So that, that's really refreshing. And yeah. going into the Noble thing, um, you know, as Mark's mentioned, we, we, we're always going to love Mark Noble. He's Mr. West Ham. He's a legend at the club. But I'm sorry to say this, but his time as a starter is up, in my opinion. And I know it's going to sound like... I'm not, I'm not slating him at all, but from what I've seen this season... And even towards the end of last season, I just feel as though his engine's running out. Too many back passes. You know, I'm always going to love, I'm always going to love the lad. I always will. And he's, he's, when I think of West Ham, I think of Mark Noble straight away. I just feel as though in this modern game of football that we're playing, the likes of Obiang and Kuyate with fresh legs, 
more engines. And as, as Anton says, I'd like to see Noble probably come on for the last 20 minutes, shut up shop, G the players up, and just make sure we grind out results. You know, that, that type of thing. But yeah, so that, that's where I stand at the moment. So who's our captain? If, if Noble's not our captain, who's going to be our captain? I'd give it to Winston Reid, personally, if I had to choose. Really? Uh, yeah, I'd give it to him. I just feel I, as though he, you just see him shouting at the back. He just he, He's not scared to crap on players. I think that's something that we need. back, man, but I'm not a captain. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give it to Rido. I'd give it to Rido. I mean, he's captain of his country. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. For me, for me personally, um, and I'll come to you, Luke, in a second, uh, um, if he is going to change captain, I don't think he is. And I think we need, as you said, Mark, we always need a Mark Noble around that squad. And I think he's got a part to play, a massive part to play in every single game for West Ham. Like I said, I just think it needs to be someone else starting with him stepping in. If we had to change captain, for me personally, with everything that Winston Reid can do, do, which is, I mean, he's had to cover a lot of our defenders' back arses this this season. He is covering up Bonnet left, right and centre. He is covering Font left, right and centre. And he's doing the job of three centre-halves, three defenders. I genuinely, and I've said this from day one, I feel so sorry for Winston Reid because he's sitting there. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I do think he is giving everything in every game. We seem to pull in this defender. We seem to pull in these defenders that don't mind throwing their body on the line. You've got a Winston Reid, you've got a James Collins. Um, before that, you had, what, I'm sure James Tompkins didn't mind throwing his body on the line to right. save that shot. You know, Mark Noble does it, but it just frustrates me because I don't think Obana and Font have got that ability to do it because they they think they can play, but they don't have the legs to play. How many times have you, have you actually screamed in frustration at either one of those? Oh, when they've just when they've just are you, no. what <laughs> the fuck are you doing? Yeah. One of those. Right? <laughs> At least, at least two oh. or three times a match each. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. that's not right. Yeah. These are professional footballers. They shouldn't be doing that. I'll tell you something, Mark, and the biggest thing that came up to me and, and same to yourself, Luke and Rich, and I think I mentioned this in one of the videos, watching a game, Font went up for a header, lost it, I think it was maybe a Tottenham game, and my mum turned around, she's a football fan, but she's not like massively into it, and she turned around, she's Irish, and she was like, what did he do? What did he do? Why is he doing that? Why is he doing that? And I was like, mum, exactly, you've watched that for one second. And you've clocked the fact that the guy is shit. And people, <laughs> I have seen, this is the thing that pisses me off. I've seen people on Twitter, and I'm not, Twitter doesn't fucking control my life. Like, that's bullshit. But yeah. people are trying to tell me that he's the most improved player, and he should be in line to be one of the best players for the season. Fuck Fun. that. <laughs> Fun. Yeah, exactly. Your reaction is the reaction I gave. Oh, shit, no, I have seen some people Dude, on there talking about it. people him. go to the games. Don't or they watch you, like, edited versions of Magic the Day. Because... <laughs> You know what? I stopped watching Match of the Day, right? Do you know why? Five I seconds. Of the fucking <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. Honestly, it's like I watched one game that we was actually really good. The atmosphere was fantastic. I, I, it was Palace, right? And it was Andy, the game with Andy Carroll's overhead kick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That game was rocking, no? Yeah. Yeah, it and was. Yet, on yeah. Match of the Day, I'm fucking telling you, they turned the sound of that, that that crowd down. Yeah. You can you can hear the crowd. He's like, what the fuck? No wonder everyone thinks our stadium is shit. Yeah. yeah. I swear to God, it's a conspiracy on that side. It is. It is. Because it, it don't sound anything like that on the telly. It don't sound anything like that in the stadium. Yeah. It doesn't. No. It does not. Yeah. And I don't I don't know why they do it. Yeah. But that's just me. Look, I suppose it comes to the point where. We're West Ham. We again. We have no idea what's going to happen. We've got a new manager. We've got a new yeah. coaching set up. We're coming up against a team that's struggling. But do you know what? Let's not take it for granted. We're struggling. So mm. if I put you right under pressure, because I love doing it every single oh, thank you. week. Thank you so much. Every yeah. single week. <laughs> I love this. First and foremost, I'm going to Go ask on, you. Luke, Luke, give me your prediction for the weekend game. Oh, oh, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it'll be scrappy, personally. Um, I can't see Moyes going in and going, go on, boys, go and play some attractive football. Let's go and see one, twos out there. Um, I love seeing what he done with Bobby Yang. Um, in my opinion, I think the social media team, they know what they're doing. They're, they're singling out videos. They know what they want you to see. Um, I like seeing it because it, it showed me that... Um, for me, most of our midfielders take about four or five touches to get out, out of their own feet, and that was like, you know, that was real, real coaching. So um, it shows you maybe that he's that he's going for an impetus of um, quick play, 
um, rather than let's just hold on as much position as we can. Um, I think that we're probably going to see a bit more direct football uh, and a lot more defending against Watford. So it could be the case that it's going to be just a um, a tidy little one nil or a two one here. I can't see it being. Um, I, can't, I mean, that's that's the before. I mean, what Watford could do is two or three nil. I don't know. It depends what turn what Watford turn up. Um, but I'm predicting that it, it's. Uh, the thing you get with with Moyes is that he's not exactly the most extravagant manager out there. Who's going to go for um, you know tricks and skills and you know fast attacking play? And if there isn't any play, it's going to go through the wings, uh, which would be quite inter- interesting to see. I don't think we do a lot of wing play at all, personally. Um, but I think he'll set up with quite a defensive set up. Maybe go for a few counter attacks here and there. Maybe try and nick it towards the end. But I can't. The the situation we're in right now. And he's not going to he's not going to want to take too many risks. He's going to try and want to get a, get a good result on his first game out there. Um, but I'm hoping for a good performance. To be honest with you, I don't want to see the same old shit we saw under Village, where it's like yeah. we might get a good result, but we've had to struggle for it. Um, so I wouldn't mind seeing a bit more um, relaxed um, approach to the game, and hopefully we get a we, we nick it. I'll be happy. To be honest with you. So what's your prediction? One or two? One or two one? Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I talked talk too much, didn't I? Um, yeah. I, mean, I forgot. Uh, I'll go for two one Westdown. Why not? Why not? New manager. Let's go for it. Rich, over to you. Uh, I think it will be a one all draw. I think a point for Moyes on his first outing will be decent. I'll take it. Yeah. Do you think you're being slightly reserved because you have lost a lot of faith over this season? Because that's definitely a reserve. To an, ex- to an extent, you. yes. Because I've been I've been very very confident in almost every video we've put up, and then it's come back to bite me. So. Sitting on the fence. Yeah. No, gotta, you're going to win one way or the other. But I, I, if we win, bloody hell, I'll be over the moon. Mark? <laughs> Do you know what? My, my heart says a 4 0 West End, but my head says no. <laughs> I, I, tell, I, I want to bring something up before you even go on. If you remember last year, the game against Watford at home. The first 20 minutes we will never mm. forget because it was some of the best football I personally have ever seen us play in a long time. That 20 minutes we were all over yeah. Watford mm-hmm. and Watford is where it all went wrong for West Ham last year and let's hope that we don't have that problem this year because it's it, surely it can only get better. I blame surely. that game, I, I, to this day I blame the Stewart <coughs> in that game. Yeah, absolutely. I swear to God, we were 2-0 up, right? And it was 10 minutes before half time, and the stewards started going down and yeah. ejecting people. Yeah, seen it. Were standing up, right? And the atmosphere went from rocking rock down, yeah, yeah. to rock bottom, right? And that fucking, that went to the pitch. It became the toxic were looking that day, about. yeah. I'm telling you. The, I, I, to this day, I blame the stewards for that. I yeah. really do. Yeah. I was yeah, there, right. I saw it all, I felt it. Yeah. You feel it when you're at the stadium, you know yeah. you do. Yeah. And that went to the pitch. Even the players, what the fuck, you know? Yeah. When you win in two 0 and they start jacking people out for standing up. Yeah. Fuck off. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna be confident. I'm confident every single week, but I'm confident we're gonna see Martinez, and yep. I'm confident that we're still gonna concede goals. But I think we're gonna score goals, and I think we are gonna see a positive result for West Ham, and I think we're gonna win three two. Lots of goals. But it's going to be a different West Ham because, in my opinion, it has to be different. I don't think we've really got a choice in the matter because what we've seen hasn't been good enough. Well, the players have to be different, surely. They have I mean, to be they, different. They've got to try and impress their new boss. Yeah. However long he's going to be there, they've got to try and impress him unless they've fucking totally got the power and they think, oh, we'll get this bastard out as well and went yeah. to someone better. I don't yeah. know, but... Rich, you made a valid. Rich, you read, mentioned something earlier on about Antonio. Did you see a kind of statement that Antonio had made? Yeah, I watched a, a video. He was actually doing a post-match mm. analysis of, of a, like a League yeah, One or that. League Two game, and uh, mm. yeah, he just full of praise for Moyes. Said the um, intensity has been great in training. Lads are looking positive. So I mean, from what I could grasp, he was he was pretty chuffed with Moyes, which is a good thing. I think Luke you mentioned you also saw it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. Before we round it up, look, you um, again. You've heard some stuff saying that do we do we think there's going to be youth given a chance in this game? We want to see youth, not just Martinez, because the rumor is yeah. there's a few other players kicking about. 
Yeah, the funny thing is, is that you got to remember is that the fact that the, the youth have been given a lot of training um, alongside the first team, but that's put main, a, a major factor in that is because most a lot of our players are off on international duty. Yeah. Um, they got injuries yeah, as well. Which is which is when it, when I heard that they were there, I, I was over the moon. I was ecstatic. I was like, "Thank God, the youth are getting a proper chance." Yeah. But half of you think well, actually, you're actually going to make a real chance because uh, there's certain players out. Like Moyes has been saying, half the players you can't even talk to at the minute because they're away on on duty. Um, but the, 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 the gist that's come out the last couple of days is that there are three particular players that might get a chance: it's Samuelson, Holland, and Martinez. Um, oh, Jesus, no? uh, yeah. Well, we're, Holland's yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But but when once he's fit, then three will probably be getting more of an, more of a chance overall. What do, you, what, do you make, what do you make on the thing about the fact that um, apparently the under twenty three is on Friday, right? Is going to be a huge indication of, yeah. of, of the team is going to put out. I think. Do you know what? Yeah. Something that does concern me because I know our media team, and it really does concern me that they put a post out today, and in that post they had a picture of Martinez. And I, I don't know if I'm reading into this too much, but I feel like we can judge what they do and then you can kind of see a selection the next day. They end up, they're not the brightest. They're not. Nah, they're not. But I'm afraid they, they, they would do that. They would, without even thinking, that yeah. people think, you know what Twitter's like, you know what social media is like, people jump on something and they mm. will analyse mm. it and they will, they will find... A, yeah. Away to yeah. their thinking. Yeah, one and, way that's, or another, and that's one thing we all know. That's the people on social media. That's their life. That's all they do. They live their life through that. And we know ourselves that life's more than that, I suppose. But I'm putting a picture. I try to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Try to. I'm putting a picture on the screen. Um, I suppose it can be a lasting thought. And the picture I'm putting on the screen, which you guys can't see, but you'll see on the YouTube channel, is our coaching team. It's the gr- group of the t- guys standing there together, do arms around each other, and. Um, uh, someone, one of our Pierce guys. Pierce doesn't look very happy, does he? No, but I think that is Stuart Pierce generally, though, isn't it? That, that's, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> his guy. <laughs> but I think um, right. someone put on our social media site saying, "Enter at your peril." I tell you what, if you are Nautovic and you're Sacco and you turn up with these five guys, you ain't going to give them shit, really, are you? They're funny, they're funny. Because they need to kick up the fucking arse. That's what they need. They really, really do. I mean, yeah. I, I'm sick of player power. I really am. I think. Football has been spoiled for, for many years, you know, by agents, yeah. player power, all the rest of the bollocks that goes with it. We yeah. need, I'd love to get back to real just football. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, thing about, the thing about Anatovic and Sacco is I think people have got to kind of, sort of half realise the fact that, yeah, okay, they're lazy players, they've got egos and whatever, but they had a manager that allowed that as well. And it's yeah. like having a parent at home that doesn't take care of a disciplined kid. It Spoiled doesn't, you know, so, so, yeah. sometimes you need a kid to go, a parent to whack him and you've had you've had a hotel treatment right now but this time it's changes this is borstal so get your gregs or eggs on this is going to get a bit hectic so hopefully <laughs> it does it does, hopefully it does wake him up and they do start going hold on we're in through it with a job here and um if i don't january's around the corner see you later what, is, that, but, is that his deal what is his deal is six, it what? six months yeah yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Of, again, I don't know—is it with a chance of an extension? We don't really know. But he has made some comments saying that if it could work. Out, it doesn't work out for me, then I'm gone. He's saying yeah. that, David Moyes. And then we get our boards talking again, saying we've made a mistake. <laughs> we've made a mistake, possibly, or it's a. I don't know what it was. I don't know if that's just twisting words or whatever. But it seems to be reputable sources that they're saying that maybe it wasn't the best choice, and it's just that's just just be quiet, just be quiet, please be quiet. So they can't want. do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's boring, so, otherwise. You know, it's going to be interesting, to say the least. I just, as much as I don't like him, I really want him to do well. <laughs> that means West Ham do well. Do yeah, you know what I mean? Of course. So, he's hard. Right, you know, guys. I hope he does really well, keeps us up, and gets sacked. <laughs> <laughs> horrible, that's horrible. I tell you what, there. we're going to round off. Like, we're going to round off the show with something brand spanking new, which is we're going to give everyone their chance to sign off with 30 seconds and I'm going to time it. Talk about anything West Ham, talk about Watford West Ham. Just get something off your chest, 30 seconds. And Mark, I'm going to put it straight over to you. Well under pressure, 30 seconds starting from now. Anything West Ham? Anything West Ham. Um, the sheer division of fans. Just fucking get together. We're West Ham, in it? Just support the club, you know what I mean? We've all got an opinion. We all have. 
none of us are right, you know. We're just West Ham fans, and that's all I want to do: support my club, Claret and Blue, till I die. That's it. Good man, nice and early. That's what we like. Richard, you have thirty seconds. Round it off any way you wish, mate. Three, two, one, go. Watch it out the weekend. Nice again for the boys. Uh, coaching staff's looking good at the moment. Moyes, Irvine, Pierce. I think they everything's looking positive at the minute. Intensity is up. As Mark said, fans get behind the team, get behind the manager. That's all we can ask at this point. And let's go to Vicarage Road. Be as loud as we can. Carrot and Blue Army. And let's nick something away from home. Um, yeah, come your eyes. Good man, good man. Look, second last, mate. On you go. Three, two, one. Thirty seconds. 30 seconds you're having a laugh, aren't you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, why? Don't know. 20, uh, 20. Uh, Bye, Billich. <laughs> Bye, shut Bye, Billich. Thank you very much for your memories from the bowling. Uh, but we move on. Uh, Moyes wasn't overjoyed, but he's saying all the right things and doing all the right things, seemingly, so far. So hopefully that continues. Um, yeah, let's hopefully have a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit uh, uh, end to the season because this season's been disastrous as last season was. Um, and, and yeah, and stop. But, <laughs> <shut up. laughs> right, uh, up to me. Thirty seconds. Watford at the weekend. We need to get behind our team. I am not a fan of Moyes. I don't want him to be there long term, but I want him to keep us up. I want him to progress the team as much as he possibly can. For me, it's a case of going in there, kicking him up the arse. And every West Ham fan of what you said, Mark, what all you guys said, let's get behind our team, let's get united. Screw the social media side of things. Let's stop fighting against each other. Let's get behind the team and create that, what, 12th man. So come on, you Irons, for the weekend. I didn't say that you cut me out. <laughs> come on. Right. Guys, do me a favour, um, subscribe to our channel. There's going to be competitions coming up. Um, also, I'm going to put descriptions in of all our Twitters. And guys, you need to get down to Mark the Ribman's um, yeah. place and eat his ribs. They are tasty, tasty. Don't let him sell out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to. <laughs> so, um, yeah, make sure you get following all the guys and uh, we'll be back with you as soon as we possibly can. Peace out. Yeah, guys.